exciting to be here with everyone for our first ever Mass in the Moss Room. Man, I feel like it's been a long journey to get us here tonight. So, let us begin with our liturgy. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, to trust in you with all our hearts. For as you always resist the proud who confide in their own strength, so you never forsake those who make their boast of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. Um, as you know, in our more abbreviated services, we don't, we're not going to read all of the readings. And this week, we're going to get a break from Exodus. I love Exodus. We have 10 full weeks of Exodus, but we're not going to read it tonight because it doesn't relate to the sermon. And um, it's my least favorite of all these Exodus passages. <laughs> um, and we're also going to leave off the Psalm 149. I urge you all to please take your bulletins home with you and read the scripture, study it, inwardly digest it for your own edification to, and ask what God is showing us in it. But um, we have two powerhouse pieces of scripture, one from Romans and the other gospel from Matthew. So that will be enough for us. So... A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is. Now it is how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is nearer. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now please stand for the reading of the gospel. This is the holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, if another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault with the two of you when the, when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, 
If two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. My mask on upside down. <laughs> so um, it really excites me to be here tonight, mainly because we're together, and it's so great to be together with a group of people in worship in person. But another reason that I'm really happy to be here at Paul Mater Gallery is because I've long had a dream of. Um, church sort of overlapping with other businesses. Some of you have heard me talk about an idea for a, having a pub that's owned and run by a church and call it the Cranky Deacon. <laughs> and uh, today, this morning, as I was thinking about this service tonight and working on the scripture uh, for uh, homiletic purposes, I thought, you know, another great name for a cafe would be the two or three. Cafe two or three, or the two or two or three cafe, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. So um, that's something for us all to think about. But um, I just love this idea of church outside the walls, church being wherever we are gathered, where two or three of us are gathered together. And there's something about being here that feels like house church to me, like what the early church was like, you know, before we had buildings and people were fortunate, blessed, lucky to be able to gather together in any space that could hold them and have the Eucharist, have the Lord's Supper and know that Jesus was in our presence whenever we gathered together. And I think there's something, even in the midst of all of this, distance that we are having to live through and because of COVID um, there's something healthy in that it's making us realize that we are a lot more than our church buildings much as we love our church buildings much as we want them to be beautiful and have great foundations and beautiful organs and all of that um, our gathering together extends far beyond the walls of the church and it makes me really happy to for us to be in a place that um, is owned and run by our brother in Christ Paul, but also that has a, you know, two feet in secular world. And we're sort of saying to the secular Healdsburg, we have a place here too. And it's a place that you're not used to looking for us. And that's really hugely important, I think. So thank you for welcoming us, Paul. Um, and I think I'm also thinking about the historic early time of the church because of our scripture today. Um, we've been reading a lot from the epistle of Paul to the Romans, and um, this is a really powerful epistle. This is the epistle that convinced Martin Luther that the grace of God is trumps everything else. And um, there's just so much deep, dense, rich, rich, rich theology in this epistle, especially. So I want to give you just a little bit of background about this epistle lesson, which reflects especially on the reading that we have today. So um, you all know that the church grew out of the Jewish community, right? So it was predominantly a Jewish movement um, that was picking up Gentiles along the way. And we know from the book of Acts that as Gentiles became Christians, it created friction in terms of what uh, um, aspects of the Jewish law needed to be observed in these Gentile communities. And it also created great friction among the Jewish communities as some Jews professed Jesus Christ as the Messiah and for many other Jews that was just absolutely anathema. So in the Jewish community in Rome, there was great friction, there was great um, fighting and disruption 
I don't know what it looked like exactly, and I don't know exactly what it was over, but it was very disruptive to the point that in the year 49, the Emperor Claudius expelled all Jews from Rome, whether they were Christian or not. All Jews had to leave Rome, and they did. You know, they had no choice in the matter. And then about five years later, Claudius died, and the Jews were allowed to come back to Rome. Now, when the Christian Jews came back to Rome, they reconnected with their Christian sisters and brothers from the Gentile community who'd been allowed to stay. But you can imagine in five years, things had changed. You know, their story had changed a bit. And this is a brand new church. So we're talking from 49 to 54. Jesus has been dead since, let's just say, 33. So this is, or excuse me, Jesus has been resurrected. The action of Jesus Christ was had happened. Um, uh, you know, 15 years earlier. So it's a brand new movement. And the, um, so a lot of things are still being worked out. This is before any of the gospels are written. Matthew's gospel was written like in 70 to 80 AD. So the epistle is much sooner than that. So the Christian Jews come back and they're, they're trying to rejoin their uh, Gentile sisters and brothers and there's a lot of conflict there because the Gentile Christians have assumed leadership positions. They like the, the formation of the church has continued without the Jewish Christians. And it's a tough situation. So Paul knows about this. He's never been to Rome. He doesn't know any of the the players themselves, um, unless they've come to him at some point, but he knows about their conflict. And he writes this letter in the context of the conflict of this baby, baby church in Rome. And this is where, you know, it, throughout the entire letter, he never takes sides. He doesn't say this side is right and that side is wrong. But what he does throughout the entire letter is teach them who they are through their actions. He says to all of them, you Christians get to join in this new history with me and with Jesus Christ. You know, he says, um, uh, put, on, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's sort of the language of baptism, where we put on the, the death of Jesus so that we can also put on, clothe ourselves in the res resurrection of Jesus. Take on this identity of Jesus. Let that be your common story together. And that's what Paul is saying to them. And the way to do that is how. How does he say you're going to put on this story? Love By loving one another. In like the first three verses, he says the word love five times. Over and over again. Uh, love your neighbor as yourself. This is the fulfillment of the law. Um, you love your neighbor. You love one another. You work for the common good. This is what it's about. So you become this common people. You, become, you share your story when you show your love for one another. And that's what it's all about. That's what Paul is saying, giving them an entirely new history. And if you couple that with our gospel lesson, which was written much later, this gospel lesson, Matthew, was written in um, the 70s, probably in the 70s, sometime between the year 70 and 80, so several decades after Paul was writing to the church in Rome. But in our gospel lesson, Jesus says, Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. I think that the language here is sort of coming together. And Paul is saying, lay aside the works of darkness, 
put on the armor of, uh, armor of light. And then Jesus is saying, bind on earth the works of darkness. Loose the works of light into the world. And we do that by clothing ourselves, covering ourselves, arming ourselves with the work of light, with the love that we are compelled by God to show one another. And it is through this love that we manifest the living Christ, the living body of Christ, as we come together and embody Jesus in our common life together. So what a blessing it is to be here in common with more than two or three of you to be of the body of Christ and to manifest the love of God, the living love of God that cannot be killed and will always be resurrected. Come with me. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. In our diocesan cycle of prayers, we remember St. Clemens, Rancho Cordova, Church of the Incarnation, Santa Rosa, and St. Andrews in the Redwoods, parochial mission, Monterio. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those in this parish family and throughout the state whose lives have been disrupted by wildfires, for those who are or have been evacuated, and for all those who have lost property. Give us the grace to lay our fear and pain at your feet and know the deep peace of your presence in all the circumstances of our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the clients, staff, and volunteers of Reach for Home, Healdsburg Shared Ministries, the Congregation of Trinity Baptist Church preparing the community meal this week, and for our own shower ministry, especially Beth and Jane. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for our human family everywhere as we endure the effects of glo this global pandemic, for all who are ill and grieving, for researchers, healthcare workers, doctors, nurses, and for all those who have lost their livelihood. We pray that in your good time, we emerge from this pandemic a more compassionate and resilient people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people and leaders of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. We pray for the safety of all protesters and peacekeepers, and that in these times of unrest, you will lead this nation to justice, truth, and freedom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit especially John, Aiden, Autumn, Daisy, Leah, Becky, Alice, Alicia, Mary, David, Deborah, Sylvan, Robin, Marjorie, Patricia, Anne, Sherry, Tammy, Suzanne, Richard, and all those we name now, either silently or aloud. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, especially those we now name either silently or aloud.
that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. prayers. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy Mercy upon us, us, most merciful merciful Father. Father. In your your compassion, compassion, forgive us our our sins, known and and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And And also with you. you. And peace be with all of you on Facebook Live, and I'm hearing that we have great acoustics. Unfortunately, we also have the low battery uh, notice, so I'm sorry if it cuts out before it's finished. We're in low battery, but then it won't be able to launch, right? All right, I'm sorry if it cuts out. We love you, and you're here with us in spirit. (laughs) So um, it is so good to be here with everyone. I can't even think of announcements, except here's one announcement. We are planning on having the service on Sunday at Preston Farm, so that's great news. 10 a.m. I talked to Lou today. It's the air quality is not bad. There's not ash everywhere, so we're on for that. Um, Stay tuned for everything else going on. We just scheduled ECW luncheon. Another like woohoo at Katie's house outdoor brown bag. Bring your own BYO brown bag lunch. Um, and that's on the 10th at 1230. Um, so I think that's everything for now. You've got the bulletin. You can see the announcements. Uh, birthdays this week. Today is Mona Haynes' birthday. Uh, Katie Rawson's birthday was yesterday. And then we have all these upcoming birthdays. Marcella. Marion, when is your birthday? Next Monday. Next Monday. I can't remember. <laughs> There's so many. <laughs> it's Donna Garvey's birthday coming up. I did go to her house and do a birthday blessing with her before she left with Amy to move to Portland. Her, her move um, is, you know, they're not selling their house, but it's a good thing for her to be up there with her daughter right now. Um, Linda, you have a birthday too. Monday, same day as me. Oh, birthday twins. Raina Bunker, Gary Holling, who unfortunately has moved to Jackson Hole, Wyoming. We wish him well. And Bill Jordan, also another eight o'clocker. So let us say together our birthday prayer. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Um, Does anyone have any other prayer offering, anniversary, birth, Thanksgiving? Well, let us just say thank you, God, for this opportunity to be here with you and finding ways of gathering together in worship. Uh, Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering to God.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and grace. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with Paul and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah. <coughs>
This is the body and the blood of Christ. Behold what you are and become what you receive. We are at this time only allowed to receive the bread. If you would like to receive, uh, just remain standing and I will bring it to you. this up here. I don't normally do that, but it's just easier right now. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with this spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Live without fear. Your Creator has made you holy, has always protected you, and loves you as a mother. Go in peace to walk the good road. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and always. Amen. 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 Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And that's what, that was lovely. Oh, and we made it. We made it to the end. Oh, yay. <laughs> yay. <laughs> Good. Good to be here with everyone. We love you. Just a round of questions. Well, since this is the, the 14th week, then would are we going to do this again on the Sunday? This is the same. These are the same scriptures that we're going to be using. Yeah. I mean, we had a choice to go with this or with the same today, but we're just going to try and pull everybody together on the same scriptures and the same thing. So if you come on Sunday, you'll hear it again. Yeah. 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 Tim and Paul and uh, the other two fellows. Brian, Brian, uh, Brian and Brian. Anybody else affected directly? Yes. Um, and, and Paul and Jim are back in their home as of yesterday, thank God. Okay. Um, Cindy Anderson comes to the early service. She's an 8 o'clocker. She owns that studio street for everything on Matheson Street, and she and her uh, husband live there, and then there's another house on their property that their son and daughter live in, their yeah, son and daughter-in-law, and then they had another adult child living with them for various reasons, we just moved from a different wife, but um, they, their house was spared by the inches, huh? and um, in the process, the firemen, they used the bulldozers and dug all around, and they broke all the water lines. All the utilities. All the utilities. So it's going to be at least a month more than two. Yeah.